In this video, we're going to talk about WPA3 configuration in the MIST dashboard. WPA3 is a successor to the WPA2 Wi-Fi security. It comes with a lot of security enhancements, which we're not going to talk about in this video, but we will highlight one of those um, enhancements as we configure an SSID. So why don't we head over to the dashboard to see what this configuration looks like. As you can see, I have uh, navigated already on the left side to site and then WLANs. Here you can see that I have a testnet SSID that is configured for WPA2 security. And we're going to change that to WPA3. But before we do that, uh, in MIST, you have to have a specific um, version of code on your access point. So if on the left side, if we go to access points, you can see I have one access point connected. You can find it under utilities and then upgrade firmware. We'll proceed on this. You can see its current version is 0 0.8.21602. Now your, your AP has to be at least 0 0.8 and newer to support WPA3 configuration. I'm going to go back to my WLAN because even though you do not have that firmware, you would still be able to configure WPA3, but the access point will not apply that configuration to the SSID. So now that we're in the SSID configuration, you want to note this security card right here. You can see I have WPA2 configured for this SSID called testnet. Now I want to show you what this configuration looks like from Wi-Fi Explorer Pro as I do a network scan. So here in Wi-Fi Explorer Pro, we have the testnet SSID and it does identify this SSID as having WPA2 pre-shared key. So I'm using WPA2 personal. And if we look at the RSN information element, you can see the details of the security and it says PSK and even the RSN capabilities show that the management frame protection is not required and it's also not capable. So that's something to keep note with WPA2 as we go to WPA3. Now going back to the MIST dashboard, all we have to do is go, go into the SSID and look at this security card area and click on more options. From there, you have different uh, options for WPA3. So uh, MIST will display it as WPA3 slash SAE, and you can see there's a couple of options. This first option here with WPA2 in it is the WPA3 transition mode. The next option, which just says WPA3 SAE, is WPA3 only with a pre-shared key. And then you also have your 802.1x transition mode and also just WPA3 802.1x only enterprise. So the, the key thing to note here is when you configure WPA3 without the transition mode, the devices must support WPA3. So in, in this video, we're con configuring WPA3 personal. So I'm going to select this option here, WPA3 slash SAE with passphrase. It's going to carry my passphrase over to this option here. And at the top, you can see that WPA3 requires firmware, firmware version 0 0.8 or newer. So after we do that, we're going to click on save at the top right. So now that the configuration from the dashboard is being pushed to the access point, we're going to see if W or, or Wi-Fi Explorer Pro sees this change and what is different about WPA3 when we look at the information element. All right, now we are looking at Wi-Fi Explorer Pro. You can see the SSID being scanned and now the security has been changed to WPA3 SAE. If we look at the advanced details and go through the information elements, you can see expanding the RSN information element that the MFP is required and also capable. That is a security enhancement from moving to WPA3 and it is required to, to have that support. MFP has been around for a long time, but now we're just starting to use it and make it required. Looking down at the authentication key management suite, you can see that it is set to SAE here and also expanding the RSN capabilities 
management frame protection is required and also capable. There you have it. That's WPA3 configuration on the MIST dashboard. I configured the WPA3 personal option. You can choose any of the other options depending on your transition to WPA3. You just have to remember that devices have to support WPA3 in order to connect to that SSID, unless you're using a WPA3 transition mode in which you can have devices that support WPA2 and the, for the devices that support WPA3, they will connect to that SSID. I hope you enjoyed this video and I want to thank you for watching.